Hey, y'all want to see something that's just incredible, you're fixing to look at it here. This was a tremendous amount of work. I had to switch cutters twice, going from the big egg to the small egg, and I'll still have to go in there and touch it with a finger on the final piece. But on an incredible head that they raised the port and did such a good job on transition of the runner to go in here and put this mess in here you know it's it, it's incredible but let me show you what I'm talking about I just finished the one guide right here and uh, you know you have to be careful doing this because you got to understand the uh, structural integrity of the guide area because you can't go in here and weaken this. You got to make it kind of like a pyramid, which I got plenty of uh, fillet radius right here and here and the back. But you, you kind of cone shape it and you can dig so far up in here. Now, this thing's going to have a hell of a high lift cam in it. So you need the strength depending on what you're doing with it which uh, I probably could have took a little more out, but I'm, I'm right there at a crossroads, so I'm going to leave it like that because I know I probably picked up 20 numbers just in this one modification right here at uh, mid and high lift flows. Now let's go over here and let's take a look at what this junk is when it comes to you out of the box. It's just horrific. Look at that mess right there. Now let me see if I can go over here. Hard for me to get them both because they're spread. You can just see. I mean, it's an incredible amount of meat that has to come out around that guide boss. Now, remember, I've done went in there, my grinder, there was a bunch of aluminum sticking up. I'd say about damn near a half inch of guide protruding out here plus the aluminum part of the boss. So, let me put a little light in there so you can see it a little better, see if that helps. Okay, that kind of puts a little bit of light on it. And in comparison, what we've got over here. So, this is where a lot of the work is right here on this deal, is this guy, because uh, they've done a great job of raising the port taller, but man, think of all the airflow that that's blocking off right there. It's an incredible amount, not to mention, I'm not a big fan of what they call a stabilizer bar. Um, I know for a fact that the round bowl is better. I can't take that totally out because once again, they KMJ would not send me a saw head. If I had a saw head and I could do it and it was thick, this whole section right here would be gone because that's bullshit. All right, now um, I'm gonna go in here. I, what I'm gonna try to do is let you watch me how I have to go between them two cutters and look at how much I got to get it ground. The first thing is I'm going to level this and I level it at somewhat of an angle to let the air come and begin its bend right here and then start to form back. Um, I have to pay attention to that because of this hump right here is, is messing things up. So I'm going to go in there and let you see just how much I have to tear out of that to make that work. And we'll get that going. All right, we're going to go ahead now and begin the cutting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the sides and then I'm going to dig at the bottom and pull that in. Look at all that bulk of aluminum. That's just totally unnecessary. Let's start the top there. Then we'll come around the side. Now you got to be careful over here because you'll hit the wall and dig into the wall. You don't want to do that. Now, like I said, I don't know how thick that is, so I got to watch that tail. All right, now I've got the basic shape cut. We're going to start trimming her in. We'll start at the back here. Let me just get you a better angle. to the smaller 
or cutter and I do this to keep from digging into the side a while and get it pulled in and then I'm going to switch to the big cutter back again. I take a second back and let you look at it as it's starting to come along. You remember how bad it looked before but see still looky there. I mean there's still a lot to pull in and I'll do this now with the big cutter so let's go ahead. We'll move to the side. See if we can get down in there. Look at that bulk aluminum just all around it. All right, let's see if we can gnaw some of this out. You have to use that smaller egg in order to get it down at the bottom or else you will tear that port all to pieces. I'm going to go on in here. I've got to gnaw at this for a while with that big cutter. Awful hard for me to get in there with that camera I wanted to show you. So I'm going to go ahead and gnaw open this and start pulling it in and get back and show you the final touches before I switch back to the other. Okay, now we, um, I switch burrs again. This time it's a carbide cutting burr and I'm going to let it dance right on the top of that guide. Because you do not want to take your aluminum burrs and cut on it, it'll tear them to pieces. See, I'm doing it in a circular motion. All I'm doing is rounding it, pulling it down to the aluminum. Alright, now that pulled it in good. I will go in there and just touch it a little bit with a, a straight aluminum burr and blend these edges. Let's go over that. Okay. I switched to my long bow and I just basically use this to take the rough cuts from where the big and the round cutters this kind of blends it in because I do not polish the intake ports this is the burr right here that I use to finalize the, uh, the blending on the aluminum. You see what a lengthy process that is. I timed it and from start to finish, each guide takes one hour on the intake ports. The exhaust wasn't as bad. They averaged about 30 minutes, but that's an hour. That's just 
rounding, cutting all that crap out. It's about the worst I've seen in a long time. I've never seen an aluminum head that had so much bulk around that guy that they didn't try to finesse that a little bit more, but when you think about the fact that both of these heads only cost $700 bare, you begin to see why. It's, uh, they have a lot of finishing work that needs to be done, but it is a good design. They really did, a, once again, a great job on the transition of the port, trying to angle it as high as they possibly could without going to a majorly different degree on the cylinder head. All right, so I'm going to finish the rest of the bowls. The exhausts are all done. I got six more intakes. When I get that, we're going to turn the head around to the other side, and I'm going to let you see how I take the ditch that I dug past the bottom of the guide and pull it out and blend it into the roof of the runner.